Hey YouTube, Matt finally back in the workshop after way too long of a hiatus. Life, kids, busy, you know the drill. But it is Woodworkers Fighting Cancer Month and you'd have to be a real schmuck to have a workshop and a YouTube channel and not throw your support behind such a worthwhile cause. This year's drive is based around a really kind of a different project. It's called a memory frame, which isn't much more than some sort of a wooden outline into which we're gonna put some epoxy and some junk which will never escape said epoxy. This probably is the most approachable yet of all of the woodworkers fighting cancer projects. So uh, to that end, we're gonna use super basic materials, reclaimed two by four. Uh, we're gonna use one and only one power tool, the table saw. And uh, while we're at it, I'm gonna bang out something seasonal and with kind of my own twist on the idea. Let's get cracking. I give myself a reference surface on the 2x4 by cutting off the rounded edge and then rough cut my square stock to maybe an inch and a quarter before setting the fence to my final one inch size. Watch out for knots when you're cutting pine 2x4s. Speed square on the table saw sled has got to be one of my favorite all time hacks. You cut one end of the stock to a 45 degree and then you can measure and mark directly from the blade on the sled where your other end has got to go. Double stick tape makes a great hold down for a stop block to make sure that you get your pieces cut exactly to length. That is one of the two critical steps to getting your miters to come together nice and square. I need a 1 8 inch groove on the back of these pieces to receive the back of the frame. I'm using a drill bit to set up my width and my height of the blade to make this in two cuts. I then trace out on my actual work pieces where I want to cut that groove to make sure I don't cut it in the wrong spot. And then finally, a 45 degree cut makes a nice chamfer on the front. Yes, I really am just putting yellow glue on a miter joint with no other kind of fasteners. This thing is gonna get filled with epoxy. It's gonna have a solid back epoxied on it. These miters are not what's holding it together. Now, as usual, don't go crazy with the band clamp. There's bringing your glue joints together and there's turning this into a twisted pretzel. I don't normally wipe glue off of joints. I let it set up and scrape it, but this is a painted project. It's not gonna matter. Also, this gives me a chance to inspect my miters and make sure they didn't slip this way. They all line up tight on the joint, but sometimes they can get out of a planar alignment like this one did. So simple enough matter, throw a clamp on there, tighten it down, and all of a sudden you're flush. Okay, got my frame out of the clamps, and as you can see, it is now finished. Uh, the finish is uh, two layers of spray paint. It was first red and then black, uh, and then I let my daughter <laughs> go to town on it with some acrylic paints and give us a nice Halloween theme. The whole thing is top coated uh, with, I don't know, three or four coats of spray satin polyurethane. Okay, here's where I'm gonna jump the shark with this project. Uh, everybody else's frame that I have seen has a solid wooden back. We're gonna do acrylic. So I have put the 200 tooth blade in the table saw. Now, if you don't have a high tooth count blade, you can score and snap this stuff. Um, or if you're having problems with that, I might say just go ahead and get a piece of glass. This size, you could get it cut to uh, size for you and it wouldn't cost much at all. If there's a trick to making good acrylic cuts on the table saw, it's to push the material through the blade fast. But that means you need to make sure you're lined up so it's only the acrylic going through the blade. With all the parts cut, it's finally time to have some Halloween-y fun with our frame here. Uh, in case you hadn't guessed from the artwork, that's the seasonal thing we're doing. Uh, I got this. This is supposed to be a necklace, and you probably can't see the lights on camera, but uh, I cut out a hole on the back of the frame to hold the batteries, and I'm gonna route these things around, and they're gonna be First thing we epoxy in. Before I can pour the epoxy, I had to attach the back. That's a job for blue tape. And unfortunately, this necklace was incredibly uncooperative. So I ended up having to hot glue each and every one of those skulls in place. <laughs> Finally, time to pour the epoxy. This is at 2x speed. It doesn't go quite that fast, but the epoxy is self-leveling. And there wasn't nearly as much in the cup as I thought. So I'm using the highly accurate, is there the same amount in both bottles method to mix up a little bit more. You can see how it kind of flows. As long as you try to get it poured roughly where it's not there, then it works out okay. And uh, once the epoxy is in place, then you get to add your fun little bits. Here, wonderful silicone body parts. You gotta love the dollar store. 
Alrighty YouTube, it has been seven or eight hours, something like that, since I poured this, and uh, it's not fully cured yet. Uh, it can take, in the temperature my shop is, as much as 72 hours to completely and totally harden, but it's more than far enough along that we can do a second pour. It's worth mentioning that I really should have done a much better job of sealing around the back before I poured the epoxy in. Uh, the blue tape held the back in place, but it didn't really do a great job of making the epoxy you know, stay in there in its entirety. I have kind of a gooey, sticky mess on the back, and I think I probably ruined the battery module for my light-up necklace. But that's okay, because I got some other tricks up my sleeve for decorating this guy. After mixing up another batch of epoxy, I'm going to add some red food coloring. Yeah, food coloring will work to dye epoxy. Trans tint or some other higher quality dye would certainly be better, but this seems to get the job done. I'm also going to add a little bit of filler to thicken this red color up. In addition to putting the filler in the epoxy to thicken it up a little bit, I'm also going to wait to pour it. Uh, the hardener has already started doing what it's going to do, but this is a very, very slow curing epoxy. So I can wait 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And when I pour it, it will stay in the nice little streaks and blood spatters and spots and stuff, rather than self-leveling and just turning into a pink glow. Even with the thicker epoxy, if you pour it on, you'll have enough that it'll want to spread out. So drizzling it with the stir stick is really a much better plan. I mixed up a batch of clear and went back to fill in the space between the red, thinking that this would help hold it in place. I don't know if that worked or not, but it did give me the opportunity to add more than one layer of red. The finished product. Creepy. What do you think of your artwork now, Madalini? It's lovely. It's lovely. And we learned a couple of things along the way too, didn't we? Yes, yeah. We learned that the pourable, self-leveling epoxy is a lot thinner than the adhesive epoxy that uh, I'm used to working with. I uh, should, have, should have glued with the hot glue this uh, back acrylic on before I put the epoxy in. I would not have had nearly as much of a mess. In fact, my lights would probably still work. We learned that food coloring can in fact be used to tint epoxy, although I wish it was a little deeper and darker, to be perfectly honest with you. I probably should have put uh, a little bit of blue or black or something in there with the red to make it a little more morbid. And I learned that a trick I read about online does in fact work. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to tell when I do the close-ups, but when the first layer of epoxy was about four or maybe five hours into the cure, it was at a gelatinous stage, I think is the best way to describe it. So you could pick up the frame, and you could move it around, and it wasn't immediately obvious that the epoxy was shifting, but it is. And it's just enough distortion to the epoxy, and it's thick enough at that point to hang on to that distortion, that it gives the final product kind of a, an old-fashioned rolled glass look. It's transparent, but it's not crystal clear like modern window glass. If you wanted crystal clear like modern window glass, just leave it alone. <laughs> Let it fully, fully cure before you move it at all, and uh, it'll come out spotless. I went with the halloween -y theme because I had never done this before. I knew I was going to uh, make some mistakes and want to try some stuff. And uh, with a halloween theme decoration, the more you mess up, the more it looks like a Halloween decoration. <laughs> Anyway, big shout out to Mark, Nicole, everyone over at the Wood Whisperer organization for putting together the Woodworkers Fighting Cancer Drive, something I look forward to every year and I feel privileged to be able to participate. There's still time left if you want to get into your shop and uh, clearly you can hack something together and it still counts, so uh, don't waste the time you got left. Get out there, make something for the cause, and above all, stay safe YouTube.